I want to play this clip of Elizabeth Warren just because, well, two things. One, to draw your attention to a couple of things, I guess. One is that there is an attempt by some, Elizabeth Warren being one of those, to get the Labor Department to change rules under ERISA. ERISA, of course, is the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of early 1970s. Basically was put in place when, uh, I can't remember what company it was that went under. U.S. Steel, I think it was. This is off the top of my head. There was a major industrial company that went under and took their pension plan with it. So people had paid into this pension um, for years, a defined uh, benefit plan, and nothing left. And ERISA basically was a response to that, which basically said, look, you've got to uh, fund your plan. Um, you can't have these crazy projections as to what your investments are going to be returns because, you know, if I put my money into... I could say to, uh, I could say to Nikki, like, "Oh, we're gonna have millions of dollars in retirement. I'm putting away ten dollars a year, but I expect twenty five thousand percent returns each year, and so we're gonna be loaded." Um, that's basically the game that we see played with. We, we see it with states sometimes do it when they want to give tax cuts to people. They'll just say, like, we can underfund our pensions. And all we got to do is increase our optimism as to how much we're going to make in these funds. And ERISA basically uh, put some standards on that. And also, um, I believe also in, in many cases, um, created the, uh, I, I believe it created the Pension Guarantee Trust. Uh, which made companies um, basically provide some type of insurance at the end of the day for their, their pensions. Nevertheless, under ERISA, the Labor Department can require investment managers who advise on pension funds to actually provide advice that is in the best interest of those people who are participating in the pension fund or have a pension as opposed to in their own best interests. Let me repeat that. There is hearings going on so that there is a regulation saying that investment advisors ha actually have to provide investment advice that benefits their client as opposed to primarily benefiting the person giving advice. That seems somewhat obvious, but that law does not exist now. So you should know that when you talk to your investment advisor about your pensions, that he's not obligated legally to give advice that's going to help you. He could be giving you advice that's going to help him or her, it's to be fair. It's going to be great. <laughs> yes. See what I'm Believe saying? Believe me. I'm giving you advice, and one of us is going to be sitting by the pool in our retirement. I promise you, one of us will be. Here is Elizabeth Warren. This happened on Tuesday. Primerica President Peter Schneider was invited to testify against a new proposed regulation designed, like I say, to protect retirement savings from investment managers who may think that really job number one is for them to profit. The Obama administration has estimated that Americans lose $17 billion a year from investment professionals who manage retirement accounts by prioritizing their own financial interests over those, uh, those of their clients. Uh, it has proposed a simple solution, making it illegal. All right, so here is the exchange. It's long, but I want to play it for two reasons. One, so that you're aware of this dynamic. Three reasons. Two, 
you're aware of because it always amazes me like people go into business and have no compunction about basically effing over their customers like that's their business model and three it's fun to watch Elizabeth Warren tear a person like that apart in public play you your questions thank you mr acting chairman uh, as we have discussed, it is now perfectly legal for retirement advisors to give advice that boosts their own incomes by selling lousy products to their clients. And according to the best available data, data that are not paid for by the industry, this bad advice costs Americans about $17 billion a year. The Department of Labor has proposed a rule that would put a stop to this retirement savings drain and require all investment advisors to put their customers first. Level playing field. Mr. Schneider, you're the CEO of Primerica, a large investment advisory firm, and you've testified today that the Department of Labor's rule is, and I think these are your words, complex and burdensome. And you've said that one thing that's, quote, critical to your success is that Primerica always operates in its client's best interest. So I was interested to read a news report this morning that outlines lawsuits brought against your advisors in Florida. According to the article, at least 238 firefighters, teachers, and other career public workers who were near retirement age accused your company of providing bad advice that drained their retirement savings. And you did it by advising them to move their retirement savings out of a guaranteed government pension into riskier private investments. Now, Primerica was poised to make a lot of money, but only if you could convince Florida firefighters who were near retirement age to cash out their guaranteed pensions. So, Mr. Schneider, I just want to understand your company's advice in these cases. Do you believe that people like these firefighters from Florida who are near retirement and have secure pensions with guaranteed monthly payments should move their money into riskier assets with no guarantees just before they retire? First of all, Senator Warren, I appreciate the promotion. I'm actually the president of the company, not the CEO. Oh, okay. Um, and, and I'm familiar with the matter of which you speak, and it, it, it doesn't have any application to the rule before the committee because in that particular case, none of those individuals were clients of Primera. Whoa, 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 whoa. They paid pa pause it. Now, okay, now she's going to uh, rip into him to this, but I want to make it clear what he's claiming now. He's saying that these weren't clients of ours. They were potential clients of ours. So the advice we were giving them at that time was just like they were off the street. Like we were just yelling outside of our building, hey, guys, come in here. You're not a client of ours. We're not managing your money. We want to entice you to manage your money. <laughs> and so you're not clients of ours now. So we're not under any legal obligation to tell you anything that would be in your best interest in the event that this law ever passes. We That's hook it. you with the bad advice, and then you pay us for the good advice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just no compensation. And, but let me, let me go no, wait, to— Wait, wait, just—no, no. no. Let's just stop right there, Mr. Schneider. The article didn't say the workers were your retirement clients. It says you gave them bad advice. And here exactly is the quote. Once these workers retired and moved out of their government plans, Primerica agents stood to profit from managing their retirement assets. Had they stayed in the pension programs, retirees would have simply collected their monthly payments, leaving nothing for Primerica to manage and no commissions for Primerica agents to harvest. Now, my question is not how you were paid. My question is whether you think it is sound investment advice to encourage public employees to move their money out of their pensions and into riskier assets with no guarantees just before they retire. So, Senator, in that particular matter, 
um, first of all, regulators looked at that. They found the firm had acted properly. Well, now, and the case well, I'm going to stop you right the there. The, the question about the regulators is the question about is it legal to do that, and that's exactly the problem we've got. It is legal to do that, and I think that's what the regulators say. It's legal. My question, once again, is about the advice that Primerica agents gave. Is it a good idea for firefighters on the front edge of retirement to move out of a guaranteed benefit plan that was going to cover them for all their lives and move into a risky investment that would make a lot of fees for your agents? You know, each situation is really very different. If, if you are in a defined benefit plan and you're sick, <laughs> what happens is in the state of Florida, for example, were you to retire and then die two or three weeks later, you had no ability to leave your money to your loved ones. I, I'm sorry, and are so you it's suggesting very specific. that these 238 people were weeks away from dying, and that's why they all got this advice? Well, Senator, this, the courts dismiss those cases, and, and frankly, Pause this it. illustrates Pause it. Pause it. one Pause of the problems. Legal activity. That's, I think we've established that, Mr. Schneider, that no one broke the law. The question is whether the law should be changed. Changed. Well, you know, it's very difficult. Uh, maybe 238 weren't weeks away from death, but you never know. I mean, anybody could get hit by a bus at any time, don't you know? And um, also, uh, there was a lot of those people uh, that we met with, they had sniffles. Now, a sniffle, you know, particularly in uh, <laughs> down in Florida, where it can be very humid at times, that could turn into something, a respiratory infection. There's all sorts of different things. Things that you're not contemplating, Senator. Honestly, we're just trying to keep people from dying. <laughs> Unbelievable. I have a more complicated job than you, Senator. Senator. Okay, so don't you, how dare you judge me? Yes. I mean, uh, we're making medical diagnoses on the spot. <laughs> we're anticipating the stock market. We're trying to keep families together. Uh, you, you know, it's one thing to, uh, you know, uh, do some type of uh, uh, medical examinations when you have a medical degree. But uh, think of how hard it is for us who don't have a medical degree to perform these type of duties simultaneously while also planning on the potentialities of what could happen, financially speaking, to those people who have a medical disability problem. Um. But then again, I'm just the president, not the CEO. That's right. I mean, it's a, a lot of this stuff is above my pay grade. <laughs> when I'm a CEO, we're going to start using astrology as well, Senator. <laughs> you understand me with your, 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 Can you believe your ivory that's, tower? That's the best answer he has. Like, they weren't sitting at the Primerica offices and saying, like, look, just remember, we have this whole thing where we're getting sued. Uh, we're getting sued, uh, and we have set aside... $15.5 million in uh, fiscal year 2014 to settle lawsuits uh, like these. $15 million we set aside. This may come up. And if it does, you should have an answer. Well, uh, how about if I just say, um, you know, what if these people died? <laughs> Boom. Boom. You know That's what, it. Frank, you're on your way. You don't think I need anything else. No, no, no. No, no. I mean, She'll be everybody up. dies. She'll be up there. She'll be all cocky with their liberal nonsense. You know, you go, you just come out right out of left field. They could die. Yeah, what if they How die? about that? How about that? Bet you never what thought about, about that. You I, big I, I government projection. you didn't projection. think about that one, uh, Senator. Yeah, because everybody lives forever. Okay, yeah. yeah. Big all government right. liberal immortalist. I get it.